Welcome back, everyone, to Hearts of Iron 4. This is Kaiser Reich. I am Austria, and we are ready to continue our campaign. If you have not seen the campaign to this point, there's a link in the description that will take you back to the beginning, to episode one. We're four years in now, it's September of 1940, and I'm on the faction map mode because it makes it a little easier to see exactly where things stand. Obviously, we are fighting against two separate factions. We have the Third Internationale over here on the Western Front, and then we have the Moscow Accord uh, in the, Bal the Balkans and in the East. So uh, that's what's going on right now. Let's go ahead back to the regular map to show what's going on. The U.S. Civil War is now a two-side civil war with the defeat of the fascists. And, of course, Canada has now invaded Britain in an effort to bring back some semblance of the old British Empire. So we'll see what happens today. Battle of the Adriatic Sea. Looks like we were able to sink uh, an escort cruiser and three more French destroyers. Uh, the loss of five naval bombers. We're continuing to get a bunch of Lend Leases uh, from various nations that we're allied with, but things have kind of ground to a halt again. Serbia has just been a nightmare. We just can't seem to break through to Belgrade. And, uh, of course, the Russian front is not looking so good now that I pulled all my armies off of there, but hopefully the Germans are going to be able to start shifting units now that things have stabilized up in the north once they deal with Denmark, that is. Uh, Canada, things not looking so good right now. Batavian Commune has capitulated. And we've got another Doctrine available with air power. Close air support agility, that's nice. That'll help. Oh, we took out a Dreadnought. What nation is that? It's the RNS Revolution. Nice. So I've got a pretty big navy now operating in the Adriatic Sea, so we're trying to deal with that a little bit. But man, things are just not moving at all when it comes to trying to break through into Italy, Serbia. We're starting to make a little bit of progress on Romania, but not a lot. Let's look at the numbers overall. I'm up to 337,000 loss now. Almost all of that to the Serbs and the Russians. And then, of course, Italy and Romania. But, uh, ugh, boy. Pretty substantial losses, but we still have the numbers. Italy's down by a little bit. Nobody else is even close. Britain has pushed their enemies all the way down the peninsula to Cornwall. All right, so I'm basically just going to change to a... Um, Strategy of containment with the Italians. I'm going to keep six divisions over here, six over here, just to make sure they don't break through. Uh, I'm sending the 17 divisions that I'm pulling off this line. Uh, we're going to take them up here to the northern part of uh, where Romania is pushing through, and we're going to try to push this back if we can. We'll see what happens. We just don't have the manpower anywhere right now to get things done. We need the Germans to really get in there more, but... They're still trying to finish up things in the north. So I'm trying to figure out where best to use my limited number of aircraft. Uh, we just can't seem to make a lot of headway in Italy no matter what we do. So uh, right now we've got about 66% efficiency on air superiority uh, with a lot of fighters. We've got uh, 600 fighters operating there. Um, we also have all our naval bo bombers, uh, about a 61% efficiency in attacking the Adriatic. Uh, looks like we've also got some more air power here. I've got close air support going here, and it's about 89% efficiency. This might help. Albania just declared war on the Serbian Republic, so we suddenly have a new enemy for the Serbs. Uh, that is going to open up a new front and maybe gives us an opportunity to move in on them. Maybe that'll cause us to turn the tide a little bit. Looks like things are going pretty well there at the moment. Things are going well on the Russian front too. Oh yeah, Serbia's collapsing. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Fantastic. Another Lend Lease coming our way. We've had lots of those for a while now. Yeah, I think Serbia's done. I think Albania entering the war. Looks like 
just that extra little front seems to have caused their collapse. We're about to take the new capital of Serbia. Uh, we do have an unread naval battle result here. Another battleship taken out. Excellent news. And we've just completed experimental rockets. So we can now build rocket sites. And then rocket engines, of course, will be next. But we're nowhere near that right now. I do want to look at armor and start working on 1940 medium armor. Since we're a little behind on that. There's concentrated industry four. We are working on fuel refining still. Our latest mission over Po Valley was a great success for the Austrian Air Force in more than one aspect. Reports have come in highlighting Wilhelm Joschko Strasser's heroic deed, managing to outwit the British pilot Robert Roberts, known as Hawkeye. Excellent. We shot down a British pilot, a victory all of the Austrian Empire will remember. I'm going to stand down my navy because, uh, well, we just don't have any fuel, so... Uh, we're going to have to stand down the Navy so that we can divert all the fuel resources to our armies right now where we desperately need them. Interesting, it looks like there's a drive on Moscow happening by the Germans and the Ukrainians. Excellent news. Let's see where things stand with all of this. We're up to almost 9 million fielded manpower now, potentially. France is out, Batavian Commune's out, Serbia is a... actually, they're out. We're 99%. We just need to take one more little bit of territory to finish them off. There it is. Serbian Republic has capitulated. So let's take all of that area and then shift our forces to dealing with Romania. All right. The Ottomans have taken 28 st states. They have annexed Egypt and created an international zone in the Suez that we now have access to. Uh, so a big victory for the Sublime Ottoman Federation, who hopefully now can maybe turn their attention to, I don't know, say Russia. Oh, no! My great hero uh, has been shot down now by another British pilot. Uh, Hawk Cardigan. So revenge by the British. Although, things are starting to look better. And it looks like London might actually fall here soon. We can't really see what's happening since we're not allied with that particular faction. But man, they're making a run on London, London on Birmingham. Things are suddenly looking up. As they are in Romania. We've moved now uh, this entire army group. We've got uh, 60, I don't know, 56, no, 66 divisions on this border right here with Romania. And so uh, with Serbia's collapse, Romania is not far behind. Oh, the Union of Iceland has joined the Third International. So a new enemy coming in. Looks like the British have pushed back again. So things just kind of go back and forth, but that keeps them busy there, which means they're not uh, fighting us on the mainland. We've got another land doctrine available to us now. It doesn't really help me tremendously, but every little bit helps. Let's see where we are now with all of this. Yeah, we're looking good. I mean, we've lost a million more men than they have, but we've been on the offensive for most of it, so that makes sense. Hungarians have lost 400,000 men. We've lost 471,000. The Germans have lost over a million. And then in the Entente, looks like Portugal, Canada. That's a lot for Canada. Canada doesn't have a huge population. Legionnaire Italy is still hanging on. There we go. The Ottomans have joined. So I think we should be able to call them into the fight now, shouldn't we? That would, oh, that's huge. The Ottomans have this huge border with the Soviets. And not the Soviets, the Russians in this timeline. There is no Soviet Union. Do it. Yes. Start moving into Russia. As things continue to look good in Romania and Russia, I think Air Moscow has fallen. Oh, I think it's all 
I'm looking up right now. We take Romania. Eventually, we'll be able to deal with Italy. Italy's been a tough nut to crack. Oh, what's going on here? There's a landing. Is that the French? Oh, Portugal. The Portuguese have landed. Well, at least they're the ones controlling the territory. All right, we got to start building some synthetic refineries because we're just having a rough time keeping up with the oil situation as it stands. Yeah, I think Romania is done. We've broken through. We're pushing with 71 divisions in Army Group 1, along with many allied units. You can just see how many divisions are moving in this area. Bucharest will fall. And with it, the Romanians continuing to push through in Russia. Uh, we're going to actually meet up. The, the forces in Russia are going to meet up with uh, the Ottoman forces here pretty soon. It looks like the Germans have some divisions down there too. Iran, they're pushing up through over there from Iran. Excellent. Excellent everywhere. Ah, Bohemia and Poland have finally decided to join the wars. Uh, we're also getting some more Len Leases. Galicia and Loder Lodomaria. Lodomaria, probably. Now that they see which way the wind is blowing, they've decided to join. We've got to be careful here that we don't get cut off. There we go. We actually are doing the cutting off at this point. All right, Bucharest is going to fall here very, very soon. In fact, I could probably take this Panzer Division and take it right now without a fight. Boom. Let's cut them off. Cut off these divisions down here. And now we'll just move in to destroy them. That's it. All right, so who is this? Actually, this is something with the Ottomans. This has nothing to do with us. Fall of Bucharest. And then they took it back. Okay. Oh, that's all right. Not a huge deal at the moment. I love all these Lend Leases because they're keeping me afloat right now as far as equipment goes because I just can't keep up with all the equipment. Um, problem is we're we're running out of manpower. We do add add a little bit here and there, but we're staying pretty close to zero on manpower. All right, retaken Bucharest again, and we've isolated a bunch of divisions that we're going to try to destroy here. There's six of them right here. Beautiful. Let's do the same right here. Destroy these six divisions. Now it's just five. Now it's four. And we'll keep pushing through until they're all out. Just two left now. Lovely. All right. Chile has joined the third international. Interesting choice. That'll probably put them in direct competition with uh, the Brazilians. In fact, uh, we do have some fighting happening down there in South America. Uh, U.S. Civil War seems to be the borders right around the Mississippi River. Although the United States of America seems to be on the winning side of that at the moment. What do we got here? Naval battle. No losses, really. Okay, we're going to try to make another run for his new capital. See if we can't knock Romania out of this war. I'm out of oil and pretty much out of manpower. Alright, my, uh, my Panzer divisions are making a pretty quick run for his capital. I don't know if that'll be enough to knock them out of the war or not. Let's see where they're at. They're at 73% toward capitulation. That might be enough to get it done. Let's see what happens when we get there. And make sure we don't get cut off. 
All right, another capital has fallen. Not quite enough, but he's 94%, so... That's because he's taking some territory up north. All right, there's his new capital right here. Constanza. We'll take that quickly and knock the Romanians out of this war once and for all. Flanders Wallonia has capitulated. All right. Interesting. Looks like the British have dealt with the invasion on their soil. The Italians are dealing with a, another front down here with Portugal, but yeah, I'm just not really going to worry about what Italy's doing right now until we finish off some of these others. We're having a little bit of trouble pushing through there, but we'll get there. There it is. All right, Bolivia declared war on Paraguay. Romania is out, so we'll gobble them up. And now we can go and focus on the Russians. Where is Russia and all of this? They're not quite down by half, so there's a long way to go. Just so much territory there. Things are looking good in Italy right now with that Portuguese landing from the south. Although it looks like these are mostly, I think, French divisions that are moving in through there. Um, but opening up that, that front from the south, coming up the traditional way the Allies did in World War II seems to be working while we just kind of hold the line up here. All right, uh, Spanish Civil War is still a three-way affair. Nothing really changing there. Things haven't really changed much in the American Civil War. So we're going to go ahead, I think, now and take all of these divisions and move them to the Russian front. See if we can't help move things along over here. I'm going to just kind of go right in the center of everything. Looks like Petrograd's about to fall. I'm also going to stop queuing up new divisions just because we don't have the manpower to be putting more divisions into the field. We'll use that manpower, that's 46,000, uh, to reinforce our existing units that are already in the field. All right, we're going to move all our air power over to the Eastern Front now and help with what's happening there to support our armies that are in, that are moving into that position. So we've got almost all of them based right here. Ah, the end to a war in India. The Dominion of India has taken all of it now. Japan, I forgot, is our enemy in all of this. Let's see where things stand now. Ah, fielded manpower between 8.5 and, and almost 11 million now. It's only growing in terms of the advantage that we have here. Uh, it's only a matter before we finish off the Italians and make a concerted effort with the British, but right now the Germans are still dealing with this mess over here. Our divisions are in position, and so we're making our move, and it seems to be going pretty well, pretty fast. This is my, my current objective, is just to push out to this front line here. Hopefully, eventually, we'll meet up with what's happening down here with the Ottomans. And there is an attack going on up in the north that will hopefully result in the taking of their current capital, Petrograd. We know it as uh, St. Petersburg. With everything happening in Italy and them being so spread out and having to cover so many fronts, maybe now is the time to take my six divisions and launch a little attack. At the very least, I'll keep him busy and inflict some casualties that he can't replace. I don't think we have the ability to do the same thing on this side, but... We can at least give it a try. Yeah, nothing happening there. Petrograd has fallen. So there we have it. I think the Germans have taken it. Let's see where that puts us as far as uh, putting an end to Russia in the war. They're still only at 50% toward capitulation. I'm going to guess maybe Volgograd's the new capital. Tsaritsyn's right there. I don't even see where the new capital is. It must be in the east somewhere. Good night. No idea where it is. 
Well, our oil production is definitely helping a lot uh, because we've been able to cut way, way back on what I have to trade for. Uh, enough that I might be able to start operating my Navy again, which would be really nice to do. In fact, I'd like to probably send my Navy over to operate maybe like in the English Channel. Uh, I wonder if we can rebase them somewhere with the Germans. I don't know if that's a possibility or not, but uh, at the very least, we're going to get them patrolling the English Channel and see what happens. So what we call the Second World War, uh, we're actually looking at a summary here. These are separate wars that need to be won separately. And the war against Russia is a separate war, Russia, Romania, and Serbia. So once we can defeat the Russians, that war will actually end. It's at 84% right now. Um, the Japanese-German War is a different story. We haven't really started to even touch that one yet. Uh, so as soon as we deal with the Russians, I think that's going to help a whole lot. Ah, Kaiser Wilhelm II, the German Emperor, has died. So does that mean his son Wilhelm takes over? Wilhelm III, there he is. So we had our first combat, uh, naval combat, uh, in the English Channel. It went well. We sank a submarine. That was about it. But continue to push against the Russians. We're getting near to our borders on the northern end of our objectives. Uh, now we'll work on the southern end and we'll probably connect with the Ottomans not long after that. Uh, here's the new Russian capital. It's Ekaterinburg. That's where Tsar Nicholas II and his family were executed uh, in 1918, historically. Another major naval combat situa situation. Uh, and it looks like it went really well. So that that's the British flag, isn't it? So that's the British that we've been taking on this whole time. Uh, we sank four British subs, four destroyers, three escort cruisers, and then shot down uh, three carrier bombers and nine naval bombers, all without a single loss. Fantastic. Look at the number of divisions that are involved right now in the fighting uh, in the... Benelux region, Belgium, Netherlands, Luxembourg. My goodness, that's crazy. We do have another naval combat situation going on. Looks like it's favoring us. We've already sunk one British submarine. How's Serbia calling Romania back into the fight? Oh, we've got some British capital ships going here. Here's a real opportunity. We've lost two destroyers. Uh, four destroyers now and two. Oh, are these Germans? I think these are all German ships that are being lost. Boy, it's not going good right now. Oof. That's not my fleet. The British are using naval bombers, so I'm going to actually send a bunch of my fighters over here to start using, uh, giving air cover in the English Channel. So he can't use those naval bombers anymore. Another battle against the British. This time we've taken out two escort uh, cruisers, ten destroyers, and five more of his naval bombers. So things are going pretty well there. we got to try and deal with all of this once and for all. I sent some um, ground support air power to help with that. Getting some more Lend-Lease. Not much of anything, really, though. Is this another naval battle? All right, this time we lost five naval bombers, but took out three convoys. All right, Italy's left just one division now there uh, to protect. And they're in really, really bad shape now, so I think pretty soon we're going to be able to see the fall of the Italians. That'll certainly help things a lot too. I'm building up my manpower a little bit now that I'm not creating new units. Now we're pushing to our objectives in the south. Once we do that, we might have to try and make a run at his capital in Ekaterinburg. We're about to complete atomic research. 
it's one step closer to the bomb. We're going to go ahead and start working on nuclear reactor, even though it's really far away. Uh, nuclear reactor and rocket engines are both long-term projects, even though we're pretty far ahead on those. I just want to get a jump on those things before anybody else does. That reminds me, too, I need to work on rocket sites. Don't really have any good spots to put them, but that's okay. We finally pushed through a little bit with Italy, and now we're in a situation where we can really help out. Let's go after Parma. Start trying to grab some areas of point value, and then eventually we can come in from the other side, take Turin, and maybe knock them out. Got another unread naval battle. Oh, beautiful. Sank another cruiser. Uh, three more destroyers and took out ten more naval bombers. We are just systematically destroying the British Navy. Here's another major combat situation we're getting into. What did we take out here? Oh, uh, we lost. Oh, that time we lost four destroyers and a sub, but we took out four of his. So pretty even. Iceland's out of the war, and we are going in for repairs with our navy right now um, in Brittany. That reminds me, I should be looking at our Navy to see what we might uh, produce. Let's slow down on that and let's, let's think about what comes next for our Navy. We haven't built any new ships in quite a while. I haven't really even done any research on new ships. So I think until I research new ships, I'm not going to build any. We're going to have to work on our research a little bit. Uh, research thread there. Uh, right now, improved oil processing we're working on, rubber processing. Uh, so those are the two that will be ending soon, and we'll start picking some Navy uh, research threads at that point. But I'm going to wrap it up right there. Everything's going really, really well, so we kind of need to think about what comes next in a post-war world. Obviously, everything's going to get divided up, and then we're going to have a brand new world uh, that we're dealing with. American Civil War is still pretty much a stalemate between the two powers that are left which means it's not something we really have to worry about. What does Brazil change their name for? No, they haven't. That was just on, on a different view. Uh, People's Republic of Argentina down there. Let's look one last time at the factions map mode to show what's going on. Our faction controls so much territory right now. Moscow Accord there. Um, I think the Third International is on its last legs. Once we take out Italy, that really just kind of leaves the British. Uh, and then the People's Republic of Argentina. And I think Chile is part of that too. All right, let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. We'll be back in a few days with the next episode. Thanks for watching.